There is absolutely a real home field advantage, particularly in football, when the offense can't hear themselves, they can't focus, they can't think. The extra gear that kicks in, and you hear the roar and you've got to step on somebody, all of a sudden you get two or three steps because the crowd pushes you forward. shot to play pro football and I was going to do anything I could do to be out there on the field. Through it! Now come on, come on, there you go. When I had heard of the league forming, I actually just got cut from Canada and at that time I thought that I was done with football. With the last pick of the third round, San Diego selects Philip Nelson. You know, I'll never forget right after uh, game one he pulled me aside in the locker room and he said, you know, you're going to be our guy next week. Technically, I guess, depending on how you look at it, I wasn't, wasn't supposed to, to be playing. You know, I wasn't supposed to see the field out at CU, wasn't supposed to get a scholarship, wasn't supposed to be first team all Pac-12. Definitely wasn't supposed to have an NFL opportunity, but you know, it's just something I cared about and worked at. The airways here with third and ten, it's deflected and intercepted by San Diego, Ryan Muller. The Navy has been a part of San Diego for centuries. You see sailors walking through town all the time. This one really pays respect to those folks in the Navy. This idea of this single chevron, this petty officer's patch, the word mark in San Diego is modeled directly off of those numbers that would appear on the side of a Navy ship. To me, you know, the battleship that's in there, I mean, that just defines the power and strength that you want in your football players. Yeah, so, so the process for, for naming the fleet actually started prior to, to me even being hired. Well, maybe right around when I was hired, but prior to me actually starting. Uh, and so the league did quite a bit of surveying, talked to the community, talked to San Diego. Uh, and this was the same case for, for all, all seven other teams as well. So they went through that process and spent a lot of time trying to figure out what the community wanted, what the city wanted. And then what also represented the city well, what looked good, what would sell some merchandise and try to take all those different things and put them together. But San Diego, I think it, it was such a clear choice and it was such an obvious answer to be you know, focused around the Navy and even the Marines to some extent uh, because of the history there and what the military means, not only to the country, but what it means in San Diego. Um, you know, I immediately latched on to the fact that San Antonio was uh, an Army Air Force town and with the commanders and were sort of, so I immediately started taking shots at them because and to create a little bit of a rivalry there. Uh, but we were very lucky in that, uh, you know, our logo came out so great uh, and the color matched up so well. You know, obviously we had the battleship gray, so it was easy to go with. Uh, one of the really nuanced things that was awesome was they used the, the font from the ships, from the battleships, and used that as the, the, the helmet number. I used it as the jersey numbers. We actually took that font and used it in a bunch of our marketing. Uh, and so it, there was a little bit of a, a, a subtlety there. I think the, the subtlety of the chevrons in the logo uh, and, and what that represented, I think, was, was really good as well. And so we got really lucky and came out with this wonderful, fantastic, great logo, great colors. It represented San Diego. We had the, the yellow in there for the sunshine and the brightness of San Diego. Certainly the market accepted it right away. Generally, I would say that the response on social media, you know, 
any kind of through our website, any kind of communication we had with people, uh, blogs, everybody, you know, liked our logo and put it at the top or near the top of the league when it first came out. Ultimately, that was proven true. Uh, and we didn't, this wasn't released to the public, but uh, we had the number one merchandise sales in the league. I love cities that love football. Press shows up, it's all very exciting. Um, I'm Charlie Ebersol, I'm the CEO and founder, co-founder of the Alliance of American Football. Um, we are very excited to be here today. I'm so honored and thrilled to be part of this because of the principles and the goals that this league has established. And I can't wait to get started. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hey, how good is this? Coaching football in San Diego. It's, it doesn't get any better than that. Guess what? It's here. 75 degrees, sunny, San Diego, Sunday, and football. What more you want? And it's freaking March. I guess you know apology. These guys flip. I want them smack or I want them cut. No hesitation in your responsibility. When Bill Pauline and I first sat down and started talking about launching a football league, one of the things we talked about was the culture of football in cities. Cities that lived and breathed winning and losing and really believed in the concept of being a team city. And there are very few cities that represent that in both having a team and having lost a team than San Diego. And it was very important for us to figure out a way to make a deal. You know, I just, I've always loved football and I've just wanted to play football. So just having that opportunity to be able to keep playing, you know, is, is a golden opportunity, honestly, for me. And um, having been a walk on at, at CU, technically, I guess, depending on how you look at it, I wasn't, wasn't supposed to to be playing. You know, I wasn't supposed to see the field out at CU, wasn't supposed to get a scholarship, wasn't supposed to be first team all Pac-12 and definitely wasn't supposed to have an NFL opportunity, but, you know, it's just something that I cared about and worked at. And so I ended up getting those opportunities. When I had heard of the league forming, I actually just got cut from Canada. And at that time, I thought that I was done with football. Um, and then I heard about the alliance uh, forming. And at first I was a little skeptical. I was like, you know, all these leagues, you know, you never really know. <laughs> Um, but then I got a call from, uh, coach Marks and, you know, and he said, Hey, this thing's going to really happen. You know, are you interested? And I was like, you know what? I am, I really am. And, uh, you know, it just took off from there. So that was an interesting process. Um, they brought us in one day, the first day it was just travel, kind of meet everybody. The following day, it was um, all interviews. So uh, you got interviewed by all eight teams. Um, I want to say that there were at least, man, I want to say 60 to 80 quarterbacks, something like that. Um, and, yeah, it, and then the following day, we got to do our drills. And um, it was a really good experience. You got to meet, you know, some of the guys. I still have some connections and some friends from that camp. Um, and really, you just – you know, it was another opportunity, so it was exciting. And as a competitor, you always want to showcase your talents. Nothing's guaranteed. This is this is the ultimate meritocracy. Uh, this is a performance-based business, and, and you can walk in with all the credentials you want, but if you don't perform uh, and somebody behind you does, uh, you're going to be looking for another job. John Kitna is the quarterback coach for Coach Martz um, at the NFL PA game. And so Kitna was texting me and he said, hey, you know, are, are you training? Are you working out? You know, and, you know, Coach Martz, you know, he's interested in you and wants you. And, you know, I told him, heck yeah, you know, I really, you know, I, I'm training, I'm working hard. Um, and so we went through the um, little, the, the tryout thing. Um, and then we, the, the, the day of the draft, I know that they broadcast them with DS Sports or something like that. And they only did – so there was four rounds. And they – I didn't know that they were going to only televise the first two rounds. So 
the first two rounds passed, and you know San Diego took Josh Johnson and Berkovici, and um, and so and then it ended, and and you know, and I didn't know you know really where to to look anymore, and you know, and it kind of said, oh, you know, click this link, and so I clicked it and got on there, <laughs> and uh, you know, third round San Diego had the pick, and I was like, you know, I don't know, we'll see what happens. Any quarterback, whoever this pick is, is going to have a fantastic opportunity to be coached by one of the true quarterback whispers. Their pick is in. It's the final pick of the third round for the San Diego Fleet. And here's Hines. And with the last pick of the third round, San Diego selects. And then they said Philip Nelson, and I, you know, I freaked out, and that was a really cool feeling. So that was a that was a really cool feeling to have. Philip Nelson out of Minnesota, and then finished up at East Carolina. Well, yeah, an interesting note. Only ten starts, but something to note that Coach Marta has coached in the NFL PA game the last couple years. He's had this guy in the game, so it's a guy that he's seen up close and personal within his system, so obviously he knew his little something more about Philip Nelson, and if he likes him in the system, I have a feeling he's gonna do really, really well. When the team first came to San Diego, uh, and we were on a hotel, there was a, like a team meeting, and it was in the evening, like eight or nine o'clock, something like that, and uh, Dave and Coach Marts basically, you know, I was coming over, I was gonna introduce our, our VPs, just so they knew who we were, uh, and certainly that we were going to be asking them to, you know, do some community relations appearances and, you know, what they needed and how tickets were going to work and go over all that stuff with them. And I remember introducing uh, a guy named Johnny Castillo who's our VP of marketing. Johnny spent about 10 years in the nightclub industry in San Diego in the gas lamp, ran a bunch of clubs. Everybody knows him. If you walk around San Diego with him, everybody, Johnny, 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 everybody knows him, everybody knows him. So I get up and do my little spiel in front of the team and I introduce him and I introduce him as the mayor of San Diego. Like, not the actual mayor, but hey, it's the mayor of San Diego, Johnny Castillo. So Johnny does his thing. It was two weeks of trying to explain to the players that he's not really the mayor of San Diego. It, is that guy, the, is he the mayor? Is he really, hey, Mr. Mayor, hey, Mr. Mayor. It was so funny how quickly that, that spread because these guys were, it was new. It was all new to them. They didn't know what this team was going to be. They didn't know what the league was going to be. They didn't know, you know, some of them I, you know, were obviously from San Diego, but a lot of them weren't. And so they were in a new hotel, a new place, a new team, new, new teammates, new coaches. Uh, and they were you know, just believing anything, right? Uh, and I didn't necessarily do that on purpose. But the fact that they sort of swallowed everything we put out uh, and to, to hear them for, for weeks sort of ask, what, like, hey, does the mayor really work for us? Like, how does that? It was just, it was such a, it was such a funny story that, that uh, I always chuckle about when I, when I think back on it. What's up everyone, Johnny here, big fleet fan, made this helmet for the inaugural year, brought football back to San Diego. You know, I was kind of like, oh man, like, you know, I'm sure these people are kind of like, oh, this is like Bush League, you know, like whatever, whatever, but like, when I got to San Diego and I saw the fans and I like, I met them and especially the meet and greet, it was so cool. People coming out there with personalized, like the helmets, mini helmets and all that, it was so cool. And that was when I was like, whoa, San Diego loves football, man. We knew at that moment that we had something special in San Diego. And it's, it's you know, an utter disappointment that we didn't get to continue that. But I'm, I couldn't be more proud of the people, uh, of the fans, of what San Diego showed as a fan base. San Diego deserves a pro football. Uh, and, and they should get one. And, and I think they will get one. It was nice to be able to have someone to connect to and a, and a base to connect to. And with a city like San Diego who is hungry for more football, you know, it only made it easier to, to do that and really get that love from, from fans.